Today I'm going to be showing you how to install a Fabaro implant into your garage door. The reason we use the Fabaro implant is that it has two relays that can close, giving a, a closed circuit or an open circuit. This will give the garage door what it needs to open and close remotely. I have referenced the manual and seen on the original garage door wiring instructions where they had the option for a momentary press button. This used to be used for having a button inside the garage that you could press and the door would trigger. On some alternative doors, they use a electronic keypad outside that you can use the pin code, which then closes a circuit which then triggers the door. So we're basically utilizing that same infrastructure, uh, but using the Fabaro implant to trigger. So to do this, we are going to have a 12 volt, one amp power supply. We always recommend powering the Fabaro implant with its own power supply, rather than using the wiring that's already in the garage door opener. From prior experience, it's always better to use a dedicated power supply. For this, we plug the uh, wiring harness into the bottom of the implant. And then referring to the manual, you'll find that the red is positive and the two blues are negative. So we're going to connect the positive with the positive of the power supply and the negatives to the negative of the power supply. In addition to that, we're, we're going to utilize one of the inputs of the Fabaro implant to give the status of if the door is open or closed. After inspection, we decided that this limit switch will work best for this type of garage door. There are many different types that you can purchase. This, this press mechanism and the roller mechanism is usually sufficient for most doors. So to wire this, we are going to use the two terminals in the limit switch, which is common and normally open. And then for that, we're going to connect to the negative of the power supply and to the input one of the module. This will then close the circuit and give the negative input into the Fabaro implant. That will then give you the information on the Fabaro system that if the door is open or closed. So let's get to the install. So when mounting the limit switch, you want to have the door in the fully closed position. Now we want to mount this so when the door is fully closed, it depresses this limit switch. Now you want to do it in the closed position because if you try and do it in the open position, you could potentially damage the unit and damage your door. So you always want to make sure you're doing it when it's closed. We've already run our twin cable to the position to wire in between the normally open terminals on the switch. So once we've put it into position, ran it a few times, make sure that it is getting fully depressed, then we'll wire it in and then we can go and install it into the implant. We're gonna use through crimps, our positive, the power supply, the positive of the implant, the negative with the two negatives of the implant. We keep this other side open for the negative to go to the uh, door limit switch. Okay, so we're gonna take input one, which is the yellow cable. And that gives us the two ready to connect to the door limit switch. Let's install it in the GDO. We looked at the manual and told us that the terminals five and seven are for the trigger to open the door. This is our cable coming from the limit switch. Just using the black and the red core. Any twin cable would be suitable for this. You can use a figure of eight cable, or this is just some 1.5 TPS. It's 
So I've got it in one side to the negative, the other side to our yellow. For the remaining cables, I'm just going to cut off the ends and then I'm just going to tape them at the ends to make them safe, to make sure that there's no uh, shorting. This small black one is the aerial, so please do not cut this. So now the controller's in pairing mode. We're gonna triple click the Fabaro implant. You'll see it's now in inclusion mode. So once the Fabaro implant is in the Fabaro system, then there's a few configurations that we have to do. So firstly, when we press the input of the of the module, so that's closing the relay and triggering the door, we want it to auto off very quickly, simulating a momentary press button. Also, we need to configure the input of the uh, Fabaro implant to say that it's a normally open contact. So to do that, select on the first icon here, which is the input, showing a little running man. We go to the Fabaro implant, we go to advanced. Local protection, we turn that off, input to output one. That's basically saying that input one is not directly linked to output one. When input one gets an input, it's not gonna trigger output one. And then we come here and we go input configuration. Now this is where we tell the implant what it's looking for. So here we put it as a binary normally open, binary NO. And we'll call this garage. We save that. Now we also need to change the parameters so that the output is momentary. So here uh, we go to the implant, we go to the parameters and it's output one, auto off. Output one, auto off. We're gonna set that to one second. Hit save. Now that we have the status of the garage door uh, being open or closed, what we can do is we can set up notifications in Fabaro. So we can say if the garage door has been left open for longer than 30 minutes, then send me a notification. That can be a push notification to your mobile phone or to your email. No more worries about forgetting to close the garage door once you've left.